Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I have sat down here and just talked to you guys in front of the camera, um, but I'm excited to be filming today's video and it is a super highly, highly requested video and it's a follow-up to something I filmed previously about what to pack on an international trip with a toddler. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure to go check that one out first because it'll just give you a little bit more context to what I'm gonna talk about today. And before I get started, I just apologize for all the hum and the noise in the background. There is literally a construction site right next to me here. And over there, you might hear some humming from my oven as well because I am baking some sourdough cinnamon rolls. Um, but anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. So here I have my phone with me because I have just a list of things that I wanted to touch base on in this video and kind of follow up on um, because I received a lot of questions and requests for tips and tricks for traveling with a toddler. So whatever I say is just from my personal experience and my personal trip and flight. It might not apply to your child um, and your flight. So take everything I say with a grain of salt and just see what works for you and your family and your kind of vacation. So just a little bit of an introduction and background information on where I went, how long my flight was, whether there was any connecting flights um, and things like that. So. I went to Hong Kong, which is typically, I think, around 13 to 14 hours if you're flying direct. Um, I took Eva Airlines and I flew to Taiwan first, which was a 15 hour flight. And then there was supposed to be an hour layover, but because my flight was delayed in Toronto, uh, when I got to Taiwan, I only had 30 minutes to connect. And it was pretty hectic because all connecting flights were in one line to go through security again to connect to wherever they wanted to go. So it seems like Taiwan is just a really popular hub for traveling to all different areas in Asia. All right, I'm back. I just had to take the lids off of my sourdough bun so that they could keep baking. Um, okay, where was I? Oh, talking about the connecting flights. So yeah, anyone going to like Thailand, the Philippines, wherever in Asia, a lot of them connect in Taiwan. Um, and then, so me included, I was connecting to Hong Kong. Um, so yeah, if my flight wasn't delayed, it would have been a much smoother layover and connection. So I flew 15 hours to Taiwan, and then it was about another hour to Hong Kong from Taiwan, which like after that 15 hour flight, that one hour flight was like, it felt like nothing. So that is just like the general information about my flight um, and the length of this international flight, as well as the difficulty because there was a connection and layover. So now the difference between flying solo and flying with help. So when I flew to Hong Kong, I flew by myself with Ruben and then flying back, I had my parents with me, which was a world of a difference. So I do highly recommend flying with at least one other person, um, but if you do have to do it on your own, then keep on watching because I will share with you what worked for me, what didn't, and then at the end, I will be sharing just some tips and tricks that I found um, really helpful for me, um, just in general, flying with a toddler, whether you're on your own or you're flying with some help. So of course, highly recommended to fly with someone else, but if you have to do it, keep on watching and I will share with you my experience. So this is a kind of follow-up video to my what I packed video. So I'm gonna be sharing the activities that worked for me and the activities that didn't. And once again, this is just what worked for my kid and what didn't work for my kid. It might not be the same for your child, but this is just the experience that I had. Um, so what activities worked? This is the first one that was amazing. Um, this was actually, uh, recommended to me by a f close friend of mine. It wasn't in the video because I, I was talking to her after I had filmed that video and it's actually putting little snacks in a pill box. So um, what I did was I got a huge pill box that had lots of different compartments and then I put like a couple of puffs, one to three, whatever could fit in each of the compartments and it's basically an activity and a snack in one and that activity probably took the most amount of time and kept him occupied the longest and he had a lot of fun and he felt like he was eating a ton of puffs when in reality he wasn't really because there's only like a few in that pillbox um, so I did that on both flights and he loved it both times another thing that worked was last minute I shoved a little car into my backpack he's not super into cars but for some reason this one worked um, and he was just driving it along like the armrests of my seat and like over the edge, the headrest. I did let him get out of the seat. I took his shoes off so he was just in socks on the chair so he could kind of 
feel like he was standing and out and not strapped in the whole time because Ruben is pretty active and he wanted to go up and down the aisles a lot but it was a pretty tight flight and it was fully packed and a lot of times people are sleeping so I didn't want him to disturb people so I tried to keep him mostly contained in our seat area but yeah the little car actually he enjoyed another highly highly recommended activity is play-doh if your kid is anything like mine and they love sensory activities, Play-Doh is such a great one because you can pack it. Uh, I made my own Play-Doh and I just flattened it and put it in a Ziploc bag. And then I brought a couple of tools that I thought he would love. I think I mentioned in my previous video that he's obsessed with scissors. So I made sure to bring Play-Doh scissors, um, which pass through security fine, and like a pizza cutter and a couple of like cookie cutter type toys. I will link the products again, the ones that I recommend in the description box below if you wanna check it out. But Play-Doh was another activity that he loved flying there and flying back. So the puffs in a pill box and the Play-Doh activity um, are probably my top two activities that I would highly recommend. And then the last thing was the book that I purchased. He actually really loved that, um, especially flying there because it was brand new to him, had lots of flaps. Um, so that one kept him occupied for a little while too. The only downside to that book is that it was really heavy because it's hardcover um, and it's pretty chunky and big. That was the only book that I brought, but thankfully he liked it so we could read it um, on the plane multiple times and we also read it while we were in Hong Kong just at home. So he really enjoyed that one. Not that many activities that worked, a lot that didn't work. Um, so activities that didn't work, I did buy reusable stickers and I feel like this is just an age thing. Um, maybe Ruben's not at the age where he's really into stickers or maybe it's his personality because I know a lot of parents swear by the reusable sticker books. Um, he did play with it for a little bit but I wouldn't say that it was an activity that he loved. Maybe they'll work for you so definitely check them out if your kid is a little bit older. Um, Ruben is around 19 months now and he's just kind of okay with stickers. He doesn't love them. And the other thing was I just bought some regular stickers, trucks and dogs from the dollar store and that one was okay as well. Um, he, didn't, he didn't love them. But flying back, I bought some stickers that were like puffy stickers so they were easier for him to peel which I think he found a little bit more interesting because he could actually peel it off and they were different animals and he's really into animals. So if your baby is a little bit younger, maybe opt for puffy stickers instead of just the regular like flat stickers. Okay, next up is crayons and coloring books. Ruben's just really not into coloring and using crayons. So that was a huge miss for me and I ended up having to carry the thick activity pad and the notepad that I brought. So I wouldn't recommend that for my child, but if your child is really into art and drawing, then I'm sure that that could keep them entertained for a while. This one was a flop for us, unfortunately. And then screen time. So I was hoping that I could rely on screen time. We normally don't give Ruben any screen time. So I thought, oh, it's like a new thing. He's gonna love it. I downloaded some shows um, with music and things like that for him. He didn't care for it. Maybe watch like 10 to 15 minutes and he was over it. So that was um, not the best. The other thing was the kid headset that we bought. Funny thing is he likes wearing it now that we're at home, but when we were on the plane, I found that it just became a hassle. Um, I had to pull it out of my bag, I had to plug it in and then let him use it. And he didn't really want to use it flying there, but on the way back, um, my dad actually let him wear the ones that the airplane provided, which was also like over the head earphones, and they were pretty comfortable and they fit his head surprisingly. Um, so coming back, he actually listened to music just like some Coco Melon album that was already built into the airplane system. So I wouldn't recommend to personally go out and buy a kid headset. My sourdough buns again. Talking about the kid headset, I wouldn't highly recommend purchasing a kid headset. You could just use the one that the airline provides and just listen to the music and shows that are already built in. Unless your kid has a really strong preference for shows or the type of music that they listen to, then yeah, I wouldn't recommend bringing another thing. That um, was kind of a flop for us as well. And then the last thing was the gather mat. I didn't end up using that as a floor um, mat that I had planned on letting him kind of walk around in that front section. I used it once um, 
for him to play Play-Doh, I actually laid the mat on the seat and then he played Play-Doh while standing on the floor. So that is an option, but I don't see that item being a huge thing that you have to bring. It's definitely a great product that we use all the time at home, but not necessarily one that I would say you have to have for travel. Now I'm gonna move on to some general helpful tips. Um, as well as my most recommended products. These are just products that I found to be the most helpful. Okay, and then I have a big list here and they're listed in no particular order. I was just thinking about what really helped when I was flying and I just listed them all out. So I'm gonna just briefly discuss each one. Um, I tried to pack as light as possible, but looking back, I probably could have left a few things at home. Of course, I didn't have the perspective that I do now where I know that some activities wouldn't have worked and I wouldn't have needed the headset, things like that. Um, but yeah, try to pack as light as possible. And what I packed was a diaper bag, like a backpack which I um, use all the time so I brought that one and then I had a duffel and then I had um, a pouch so those are the things that I carried on what I recommend is keeping your wipes and your hand sanitizer in a pouch something that is really easily accessible I think I had my hand sanitizer in the diaper bag and then I had the Lysol wipes in the black duffel bag so kind of everything was in different sections so in hindsight I think it would have been better to just keep that stuff where I need it for frequently um, close to me and in my own um, purse. So the next tip is kind of related, which is try to pack everything in one bag if possible. And if that's not possible, then to categorize the items that you bring according to the need. So that is how I would organize normally, but I don't know, I guess I didn't have enough space in certain bags. So that's why things were kind of spread out. I would highly recommend keeping like personal items. So your passport, wallet, phone, hand sanitizer, those little items in a little pouch that is easily accessible. And then for your diaper bag, just put all of the diapering needs there. If you have a duffel like me, then to keep all your activities and food items, everything else in that other bag. Because for me, I found I was reaching up. So what I did was I put milk, the uh, Ruben's oat milk in his diaper bag because it was heavy. So I thought it'd be easier to carry on my back. But then I found when I needed milk, I had to get up and open the baggage compartment and pull out his diaper bag and then yeah, I think I had like his blanket in there. So I had to get up a few times just to get different items. So I found that to be a little bit more challenging. Whereas if everything was just all in one bag, activities, food, blanket, then I wouldn't have to get up and down, maybe just get up once to get whatever I needed. And what I would recommend is if you have space to keep your duffel in front of you and then your diaper bag at the top because you will reach for your duffel bag, activities, food, whatever, a lot more than you will be reaching for your diaper bag because your diaper bag you only need when you go to the bathroom and you're gonna be standing up anyway. So I recommend putting your diaper bag at the top. The next thing is is, this is just a random tip, but definitely use courtesy lanes as much as possible um, if you can, if they allow you to. I find that different airports have different rules and regulations, but you can always um, reach out to the ground staff to see if there are any courtesy lanes or if you have a kid um, or if you're traveling as a family, if there is like a family lane. Because when I was traveling back from Hong Kong, I found that Hong Kong was really great with the courtesy lane. So they had a courtesy lane for the security and like going through the immigration part. And that made it so much easier for me. I went through that with Ruben and then my parents went through the regular one and we just met on the other side. And there was literally no one in the courtesy lane and the people were so nice. They were like, take your time, mom. Like they helped me open my stroller. They helped me like put my things back. Um, yeah, so just use the courtesy lines if they're available. If you don't know where they are, just make, try to reach out and ask where they are because they will save you a lot of time and stress for sure. So the next two tips are kind of like diapering tips. The first thing is I highly recommend practicing the standing diaper change if you can because airplane bathrooms are just so tight and like if you have a toddler they're probably relatively large Ruben is already a small baby but I don't think I would be able to lie him down on that change pad had I needed to so before he flew we had already been practicing the standing diaper change just because he started hating diaper changes at 11 months um, so I found it easier once he was able to stand on his own to just um, get him to stand while doing the diaper change. So for the airplane that I was on, um, not every bathroom has 
a change table as well. So make sure to ask for the bathroom that has a change table if you need one, especially if you have a very young baby. So for the airplane that I was on, the change pad was just a board that flipped down, kind of like, um, oh, kind of like the, tr the tray that you eat off of um, when you're sitting at your table. But it's in the bathroom, um, so it was about like, I would say it was about like this wide this long which isn't very long especially if you have a bigger child so definitely practice the standing diaper change if you can because it makes changing the diaper in public washrooms just so much easier so the next thing is to do frequent diaper changes just for a change of scenery for baby and also to just get your own legs moving and to get your child's legs moving as well Ruben actually really enjoyed going to the bathroom because we would have to get up and he'd get to look at everyone and just be in a different place. So I'd recommend doing relatively frequent diaper changes. I think I would probably, I think I changed this diaper maybe every two hours. Honestly, I didn't really look at the clock. I did have enough diapers to go through the 15 hours plus the one hour connecting flight. So I did have enough diapers. Do frequent diaper changes to also prevent blowouts. I didn't have any diaper blowout issues, um, but I did have a little bit of a spillage moving on to um, bringing an extra change of clothes which everyone recommends definitely do it thankfully i didn't get anything on me and i didn't have to change but ruben he had a little bit of a milk spill and we had to change him on that last leg of our trip the one hour flight so i had to change him there but at least he was in some fresh clothes when we got off the plane another diaper related tip is to change the diaper right before you get on the plane so that at least it's fresh for the first few hours and you don't have to get up right away and if they're sleeping then they're in a clean diaper not in one that is already soiled so try to change the diaper as close to boarding as you can and that will save you one diaper change trip while you're on the plane and the number of diapers um, I googled this and a lot of people said one for every two hours so that's what I did I did one for every two hours plus a few extras because you never know like whatever i could fit in the diaper bag i just added like two extra ones just in case because i didn't want to run out of diapers on the plane because that would be a huge issue the next tip is to make sure you have a good drinking bottle i have the munchkin weighted straw cup i know a lot of people have that one because it's relatively cheap and it works but it also drives me insane because of the weighted straw like the milk or whatever you put in there always just like explodes and it's even worse on the plane because of the pressure so you always have to remember to unscrew it a little so that the air i don't know how i don't know like what the science is behind it but you just have to unscrew it a little bit so that the air goes in and then screw it back up but like just watch your liquid so that it doesn't shoot up the straw because the pressure on the airplane just makes the drink fly everywhere um, it's basically like a hose it's not like how it normally kind of spouts if you have the bottle you'll know what i mean it literally sprays so that's what happened because i for a split second forgot to unscrew that even though i had already learned my lesson on our flight to new york so that's why i had to change ruben on that last leg of the flight so yeah just that's just a little tip especially for the munchkin bottle i'm not sure if it's the same with other bottles but i would just double check um, to be safe because of the air pressure in the cabin and the next thing is regarding like strollers and carriers i still highly recommend bringing a carrier but if you can if it's possible bring one that doesn't have the metal rings because every time you go through security, they're probably gonna make you take it off because of the metal pieces. So although I love, love my Sakura Bloom carrier, I might not use it for travel again just because of the metal pieces and I had to remove him from it every time I went through security, which was kind of a pain, especially if you're traveling by yourself. If you're with someone else, I don't think it's as big of a difference and I still love that carrier because it's so much smaller um, than a lot of the other carriers that don't have um, metal pieces like the Ergo Baby um, would be a good option, but the only thing with that one that I don't love is that it's huge and traveling alone like i didn't want to carry a huge carrier but that's just a little tip if you have a baby baby then i would highly recommend bringing a wrap because it's all cloth you can keep your baby close to you i'm pretty sure they won't make you take it off because there's no metal pieces it's just a piece of fabric and then regarding the stroller definitely if you can gate check your stroller so that you can use it while you're waiting to board um, even if your kid doesn't want to sit in it like my kid he never wanted to sit in it um, you can use it to 
push around your luggage or your bags or whatever. So that just kind of saves your muscles a little bit. Definitely saved my muscles for sure. The next tip is probably my number one tip that I think made the biggest difference between the first flight and the flight coming home. It is to prioritize sleep. So I know like a lot of people say, bring lots of snacks, keep them occupied. I think I was focusing too much on like activities that could keep him occupied and like filling him with snacks. But, but I think the biggest difference that um, affects a child's mood is whether they can sleep or not. So for my first flight, when I was traveling alone, it was really difficult to get him to fall asleep and also to stay asleep because there were a lot of other babies and other children. So the smallest little noise would wake him up. And the other thing is, that ribbon runs really hot and I found that because I carried him in my carrier to get him to sleep I would rock him like that because it was pretty tiring to hold him in my arms I found it easier to rock him to sleep in the carrier but then he got extremely hot because of like the body heat and then like the fabric of the carrier so the heat made it also difficult for him to fall asleep so he would just sleep in spurts of like 30 minutes and then wake up super cranky and angry because he was still tired and he was frustrated that he couldn't go back to sleep so I definitely recommend prioritizing sleep on the airplane yeah, and just making sure that your child is comfortable so if your child runs hot like mine don't cover them with blankets they're probably gonna be really hot especially if they're a lap ticket like Ruben he sat on my lap the entire time you're gonna have that body heat no matter what if they're in their own seat it might be a little bit different because they have more airflow around them um, but yeah just make sure that the temperature is a good temperature that they're not too hot and that they can fall asleep and stay asleep um, and another thing to hopefully help them fall asleep is to let your kid run around get the, all their energy out before boarding this probably depends on the time of your flight as well my first flight was in the middle of the night which was probably not great to begin with because he was already overtired by the time we had checked in and passed through security and everything it was around midnight 1 a.m it would have been already like halfway through his regular sleep so i don't think that helped with his sleep but definitely let your kid run around get their energy out so that when they board they're really tired so what we did in taiwan coming back from hong kong we flew from hong kong to taiwan and we just let ruben run all around wherever there was empty space he loved being on the ground and just getting all his energy out and he slept so much better on the flight home he just slept like this on either my lap on my dad's lap or my mom's lap sometimes we had to fan him because he got too hot but i barely ever used my um, muslin cloth on him as a like warmth thing because he just ran super hot but that is just another tip to hopefully promote good sleep for your baby on the plane okay and another thing that I think I could have packed into my check-in luggage was like all that food utensils and scissors and the food container because unless you have a long connection, you don't really need that stuff on the plane. There's also not a ton of space for that because once they serve the food, like the only thing that fits on the tray is your tray of food. It's not like you have another table for your kids' utensils. I don't know why I thought I would need that stuff. So unless you have a long connecting flight where you think your child might need the utensils, then I would just check it in or skip it completely the only thing i would maybe still keep around is the bib in case i do want to eat and you want to keep them clean so maybe just the bib no utensils food scissors and food container next little tip is just lots of wipes like you can never have enough wipes so just bring tons <laughs> In terms of the different bags that I use to carry my items, my diaper bag, my Fjall Raven backpack, highly, highly recommend. I use it on the daily as well, so maybe I'm just used to that backpack, but it's super lightweight and it's just really comfortable to carry. So definitely recommend that bag. The Monos Duffel, it's an overall really great duffel for traveling, but I found it to be a tad heavy for if you're traveling alone. It's super spacious and it has really good um, compartments. And I love the luggage trolley sleeve the only thing is that I found it a bit heavy especially if you're traveling alone like I had my backpack I had my pouch I had my child a stroller and then like carrying the duffel like that was pretty tiring especially for my connecting flight I didn't have my stroller then because it was gate checked and it just went directly onto my next flight so that was very heavy but thankfully another little thing is that people are so kind and people will help you 
Um, a lot of people just reached out and said like, hey, can I just pull your bag down for you? When I was waiting to connect in Taiwan, the man behind me was like, oh, where are you going? Like, can I help you with your bag? And it ended up that we were both going to Hong Kong. So that was kind of a relief because I was really stressed because I only had 30 minutes to connect. Um, and the line was like, super long um, and I was juggling so much. I was so tired after the 15 hour flight and he literally carried my duffel for me all the way to our next gate, which was another thing. It was like super far, I had to go upstairs and like whatever. But yeah, people are really nice. And if you do need help and you're like me and you're a little timid, you don't want to bother people. The lesson I've learned is to just reach out more and ask for help because people will help you. And then for my personal items and documents, things like that, I used a lightweight fanny pack, which I borrowed from my sister. It was one from Baigu. I don't have it with me anymore. It was just slightly bigger than the one I normally carry. And it was even able to hold my camera. I'll see if I can find like a picture of it online and then I'll link it down below because it was a really great purse. I used it the entire time I was in Hong Kong as well. So I definitely recommend that. And then the last product that I recommend is the Stork diaper bag thing. It's just like small and compact and it holds a lot like it doesn't look like it'll hold a lot of diapers but it holds like a ton i mean i had one for every two hours for my trip plus a couple extras so yeah it was good and i also put like a sunscreen in it a cream vaseline extra change of clothes like in there so it actually fits a lot what i like about it is that it also has a handle so every time i went to change reuben in the bathroom i just took that bag and then my wipes and i just brought that and it was really nice and simple and everything was just contained in one bag. Um, so yeah, highly recommend that product as well. So I think we have come to the end of all my tips and what worked, what didn't, my recommended products. So the question, would I do it again? It was such an amazing trip, but I think I would never travel again with such a young toddler alone. I would recommend traveling either with a baby who can't walk yet or with a child that is slightly older and is able to sit on their own and kind of entertain themselves with activities. If you have to travel, I mean, if you really want to travel with a toddler, then go for it because like at the end of the day, it was such a fun trip. I had an amazing time and it was just really nice to um, be able to show Ruben Hong Kong and meet with relatives and friends, just be in a different city. And I think Ruben really grew from that trip. Um, it's such a busy city. So he learned so much. His language developed a lot while we were there just because there's like so much stimulus. Um, he got to meet people that live in a different country and he got to learn about his own culture, which I mean, he's really little and he's probably not gonna remember it, but I just really enjoyed that trip overall. So if you can travel with someone else, that is my number one recommendation. If you have to travel alone, it's doable and you can do it. It's probably going to be very tiring and exhausting, but hopefully some of the tips here I've given you or just the experience that I've shared with you will help um, and just encourage you to go and take that trip because yeah, trips are a lot of fun. And I think uh, with my own experience, honestly, for this trip, for my flight alone, like everything that you wanted to not happen would have happened on this flight. And what I mean is like it was delayed and then my connection was delayed. When we got to Hong Kong, we lost our luggage. We didn't have a luggage in Hong Kong for the um, first night, thankfully. Like thankfully, like the next morning um, we got, we had our luggage. I threw up on the plane twice. Um, so some other little things that randomly happened that like probably wouldn't happen to you, but made it a lot more stressful. Like my skin was so dry, like my hands were so dry that my thumb, like this area started bleeding and I had to ask the flight attendant for a band-aid. Like just like things that you wouldn't expect to happen, happened to me. Part of it got cut off, but the other thing was that when I was filling out the landing card in Hong Kong, my pen exploded. So I had to pick up all the pieces and then just like use the one at the counter. But basically like everything that you don't wanna happen on a trip with a toddler or just on a trip in general, happened to me so but in the end i still survived and i had a lot of fun so all that to say go on your trip if you want to go on a trip with your toddler um, but if you can and get help get help but yeah i hope that this video was helpful for you if it was make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe for more videos if you have any further questions or any comments make sure to leave them down below and i will get back to you and i will see you guys next time bye